Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Altaviz Munnings. Welcome to the Bahamas Tonight. The weekend edition is always good to see you. Topping the news this Sunday, Prime Minister the Most Honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis making it clear today that relief and recovery efforts on Abaco and Grand Bahama are progressing well. The Prime Minister held a press conference at the office of the Prime Minister earlier this afternoon to provide a timeline on the restoration process on the island of Abaco. The government is in the process of executing a comprehensive and progressive reconstruction strategy and assistance program to restore our communities and economies as quickly as possible. After holding town meetings in Green Turtle, Guana, Manowar, and Elbow Keys of the Abacos last week, Prime Minister the Most Honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis began his update on Abaco hurricane restoration with housing. Noting that all government operations and workers were affected by Hurricane Dorian, the Prime Minister announced that trailers to house critical government workers are already on the ground. Trailers have been assigned to the Ministry of Works, the Ministry of Health, the Ministry of Education, the Royal Bahamas Police Force, and other services that are essential to a properly functioning community. The site of the government's family relief center in Abaco, near Spring City, will house 125 of the 250 domes. And each dome can, can accommodate up to five individuals. Domes will sit on secured foundations which will be constructed by local labor. The remaining 125 domes will be made available for local residents in Abaco who are restoring and or repairing their homes. And so far, the Spring City and Central Pines subdivision have been identified as locations for some of the remaining domes. The Prime Minister revealed that the first shipment of 40 domes is scheduled to arrive in mid-November and will be placed in the Spring City Subdivision. Additionally, he noted the International Red Cross and Samaritan's Purse have committed to assist with home repairs. And still on home repairs in Abaco, debate on the Disaster Reconstruction Authority Bill will begin in Parliament this week, which is expected to propel the implementation of the Bahamas National Recovery and Reconstruction Fund. Prime Minister Minnis said the proposed trust fund will provide a $10,000 grant to hurricane hit families for building supplies and labor. The fund will receive applications from Bahamians in need and work with pre-selected contractors and project managers, pre-approved applications, inspect homes, <coughs> disperse funds directly to contractors or building suppliers and receive necessary government approvals. The government will provide the initial funds to start up the trust. The government also plans to establish a $1.5 million loan grant program to assist farmers, fishermen, and those in the boating industry in the special economic recovery zones of both Abaco and Grand Bahama. And this grant program will provide up to $50,000 to help restore these businesses that are an important part of getting the affected communities and economies up and running again. The Prime Minister also gave a timeline of government operations that will resume in a matter of days. The port of Marsh Harbor is fully secured and functional. The Royal Bahamas Defense Force has a presence at the site and the perimeter has been enclosed with fencing. Normal operations are starting to resume. The Marsh Harbor International Airport is expected to, to start receiving international flights by next weekend or soon after. TSA officials from the USA have started inspections of the airport and the process has started to secure the perimeter of the airport with fencing. Power is expected to be restored to the north within a week or two. 
cleanup efforts are also progressing well in the mud, sand bank, and other areas, including the Keys. Baker's Bay has agreed to adopt schools in Cooperstown, Green Turtle Key, and Hopetown. In Blackwood, in North Abaco, the government has secured a commitment from Baker's Bay to build the single home that was destroyed in that settlement. Baker's Bay has also agreed to repair a second home that suffered significant damage in the same settlement.